All right, here's uh, something else that looks a little bit like a seborrheic keratosis and may in fact be uh, related depending on your point of view. This is a solitary lesion from the face and it's a shave biopsy. And you can see that it's got that pink appearance that's kind of like a seborrheic keratosis made of pink keratinocytes. You can see some areas that look like horn pseudocysts that are filled with orthokeratin. But this uh, lesion, instead of having kind of the flat bottom that most seborrheic keratoses have, it really pushes down. You can see that it's kind of uh, uh, kind of pushing down with a kind of cup or bowl shape. Here you can see it again. It's uh, pushed up uh, above the epidermis, but also is kind of bulging down into the dermis. And um, although the first uh, part that we saw over there was uh, was kind of cut across the bottom, you can actually see the base of the lesion here on this uh, section. And it looks like it's got a smooth border and no infiltrative growth, so that's helpful. And when you look closer, um, a lot of some of the spaces are artifactual, unfortunately. But when you look uh, closer here, what you find is this really unusual pattern. The keratinocytes are making these little tiny whirled balls. You can see that each individual keratinocyte cluster, they're kind of swirled together in these little balls or whirls. And these are called squamous eddies. And you can see these in irritated separate keratoses, but when you see something that looks like a seb and is pushing down into the dermis with kind of a cup-shaped or bowl-shaped um, kind of uh, profile, and then it has lots of these uh, squamous eddies, the other thing you can think of is what's called an inverted follicular keratosis. And the reason it's called that is it tends to be centered on hair follicles. And I think that's probably what we're seeing right here is a portion of the follicle that's kind of been replaced by this tumor. Or maybe even here, maybe there's kind of more than one uh, branch of the follicle that's that's got this tumor growing in it. And these are benign tumors. Uh, and the biggest problem I think with them is that occasionally they can get some reactive atypia. And oftentimes on a shave biopsy, they're transected at the bottom. You can't see the base. So in an old sun damaged person, I always worry a little bit, could this maybe be a squamous carcinoma? And um, if I um, am uncertain or I feel there's kind of some atypia there, I might occasionally say, well, keep an eye on the patient. And if it grows back, then you need to go biopsy it again. Or if I'm really worried, I'll tell them, well, I just really can't tell and uh, please do a small re-excision. So that's how I handle that issue. Everyone has their own way of addressing um, atypia and uncertainty when we run into them in derm path. But um, I try to be as definitive as I can, but sometimes we just can't know if we can't see the whole lesion. But these are really pretty. I really like these, uh, these kind of squamous whorls and eddies. And um, I think that's a very, very beautiful pattern that you can see where the squamous cells kind of swirl around. And it could get confused potentially, I guess, with, um, with keratin pearls that you often see in squamous cell carcinoma. The biggest difference is that here, these little whorls and balls are in the middle of the tumor itself. They're kind of up in the epidermis or in the protrusion of the tumor from the epidermis, whereas keratin pearls and squamous cell carcinoma um, usually are kind of individual invading nests of keratinocytes down in the dermis, kind of separate from the main tumor mass. But again, look at that. You can just see each one of these each one of these little discrete swirls or whirls or eddies of keratinocytes. So again, from low power, uh, kind of looks like a seb, but growing down, often centered on a kind of a follicular opening here and has those little um, squamous eddies, inverted follicular keratosis or IFK, as we often abbreviate it. We like to abbreviate names in DermPath.